Okay, so um, the last sort of piece of our puzzle um, in terms of establishing all the rules that we need for um, integration or anti-differentiation is to consider the integration of circular functions. Um, so let's, like we did with the other earlier functions, let's consider how we go about differentiating these functions and think about how we're going to reverse that process. Um, so we know that the derivative of sine is cos. Um, and that if it was sine of ax plus b, it would become cos of ax plus b, but then we would multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would be a. So essentially we get a times cos of ax plus b. And we differentiate. We know when we differentiate cos, we get negative sine of ax plus b, and then we multiply by the derivative of ax plus b, which is a. Okay, so let's think about reversing that. I'm going to work these through. Okay, so let's think about, like we talked about um, earlier, the fact that every time we learn about a derivative, we know something about a derivative, we automatically know something about an antiderivative. Okay, so if I know that the derivative of this green thing gives me this blue thing, then I automatically know from that that the antiderivative of the blue thing, so let's see, a times cos of x plus b, is equal to the green thing, dx. Okay, so that's a really important starting point. We'll actually talk more about this process of using what we know about derivatives to find antiderivatives. We'll, we'll talk about this in more detail um, in the next video, I think, actually, the next in, in the next couple of videos, anyway. Um, Okay, so immediately, if we know that the derivative of the green thing is the blue thing, we then know that the antiderivative of the blue thing is the green thing. Okay, we can stick a plus C on at the end, but let's worry about it now. So then what we know is we can take that A outside of the integral. So we know that A times the integral of cos of AX plus B with respect to X is equal to sine of AX plus B. And then if this is what we're actually interested in finding, what's the integral of cos? we can get that on its own just by dividing by a. So the integral of cos of ax plus b with respect to x is equal to 1 on a times sine of ax plus b plus c. So that's going to give us one of the rules in the box over here. So the antiderivative of cos is 1 on a times sine of ax plus b plus c. Okay, so then let's think about reversing this information and hopefully that gives us our antiderivative for sine. So we know that if the derivative of cos of ax plus b is negative a times sine of ax plus b, we then know that the antiderivative of negative a times sine of ax plus b is equal to cos of ax plus b. So same logic can apply here. I'll do it all in the one step. We can take the a out of the integral and then obviously we can divide it over to the other side, or negative a I should say. And so we get integral of sine of ax plus b is equal to negative one on a, so dividing by negative a of cos of ax plus b. And so that's our antiderivative of sine. Okay, and so that can go in the box over here. So antiderivative of sine is negative 1 on a cos of ax plus b. So we remember derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is negative sine, antiderivative of sine is negative cos, derivative of cos is sine. I don't remember those as four separate things. I remember just the derivative ones. I know that the derivative of sine is cos. They're both positive, so therefore when I antidifferentiate cos, I'll still get positive sine. However, I know when I differentiate cos, I get negative sine. So there's that negative connection between them. So that means when I antidifferentiate negative, uh, antidifferentiate sine, I'll get negative cos. Okay. So um, as I said, trying to think about what you need to remember. Um, the rules are on the formula sheet. A lot of these integration rules. I'm not sure that it's ax plus b from memory, but um, a version that will at least allow and that'll allow you to get your negatives right. Okay, so let's just work through some examples. Oh, it should also be noted that we don't consider the integral of the tangent function in methods. Okay, so let's um, work through some problems. So we want the antiderivative of sine of 24x. Okay, so we know antiderivative of sine is negative cos and it's negative 1 over a times cos. a in this case is 24. So it's negative 1 over 24 times cos of 24x plus c. 
antiderivative of cos of 4 minus 2 theta d theta. Okay, it doesn't matter that it's theta, it's just change the variable. It's the same here. We had a function in terms of x, so we're differentiating, uh, integrating with respect to x. Here, function in terms of theta, integrating with respect to theta. In this case, our a value is negative 2. So it's going to be, and the antiderivative of cos is positive sign. So we'll get a negative, but it'll be from the negative a, not the um, not that when we integrate it becomes negative. Sorry, negative 2. So 1 on a, negative 2, times sine of ax plus b, which is 4 minus 2 theta, plus c. So negative half sine of 4 minus 2 theta plus c. Okay, um, part c. So this time a definite integral. So find the antiderivative first, then focus on subbing in your um, terminals. So in this case, a is negative 1, okay, the coefficient of x. So antiderivative of cos is, ne is positive sign. Okay. So again, we'll get it'll be negative, but because of the negative 1. So it's going to be 1 on negative 1, which is negative 1, uh, times sine of 3 pi minus x. Don't need a plus c in a definite integral between 0 and pi on 4. Okay, so careful with the negatives here. Um, you're, the potential you, the potential here is to drop a negative. As I've said to you previously, the errors you'll make in these questions won't necessarily be about not knowing your antiderivatives or not knowing what integral to set up. It'll be in the algebra, dropping a negative, um, careless fraction work, all that sort of thing. Okay, so subbing in pi on 4 gives us negative sine of 3 pi minus pi on 4. And then we've got minus minus, so plus sine of 3 pi minus 0, so just 3 pi. Okay, so 3 pi minus pi on 4, 3 pi is 12 pi on 4, take away 1 pi on 4, so that's 11 pi on 4, and then plus sine of 3 pi. So this is once again where methods really requires, you can't treat each topic as separate, you have to know about your circular functions in order to integrate circular functions. So you have to know about their graphs if we're finding areas, you have to know um, about exact values when we sub numbers in. Okay, so we want to think about these two things. So we're looking at sine, sorry, uh, at 11 pi on 4. So thinking about our unit circle, thinking about where is 11 pi on 4. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Or you think about, you know, 3 pi is here. We did 3 pi minus pi on 4. So regardless, it's in the second quadrant. Okay, and so sine is negative there. Okay, so it's going to be equal, sorry, sine is positive there. Um, so this is going to be the same as sine of pi on 4. Okay, so sine of 11 pi on 4 is exactly the same as sine of pi on 4. And hopefully we know our exact values for pi on 4. Uh, they all come from the special triangle um, with sides of 1, 1 and root 2. Sine of pi on 4 therefore is 1 on root 2, opposite over hypotenuse in the triangle. Um, so if sine of 11 pi on 4 is 1 on root 2, there's a negative out the front here, over here, so it's going to be negative 1 on root 2. And then sine of 3 pi, remember sine is the y coordinate, 3 pi is over here, y coordinate is sine of 3 pi. So y coordinate at 3 pi is 0. And so therefore, this definite integral is equal to negative 1 on root 2. So we don't ignore the negative, it's not asking us to find an area, it's just asking us to find a definite integral. The fact that we get a negative value means that if we think about this as an area, there must be more area below the x-axis than there is above the x-axis in this region. It might be completely below the x-axis, but there might be, it certainly has more um, negatively signed area than positively signed. Okay, and then part D, which I think is our last example here, find the area bounded by the curve y equals 5 times sine of 2x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals plus minus pi on 2. Okay, so let's think about drawing the graph. As I, as I said, <laughs> can't can't just ignore your circular functions while you're doing calculus. So amplitude is 5, period is pi, 2 pi on 2. It's a sine curve. Um, we're interested in both sides of the y-axis because of this. So we're going to have one period happening between 0 and I'm just going to scale that graph down in a minute because I've drawn it so big um, and I haven't got a lot of space to find my integral. Okay, so that's going to be pi on 2 there. And then obviously if we continue it back here, sorry, let me try and get it so that it's sort of symmetric. Let's try and get that. Okay, 
and then we see another bit over there. Okay, so and that's negative pi on 2 there, so that's where we're interested. So we want the area bounded by the curve, so here's my curve, the x-axis, and x equals pi on 2 and negative pi on 2. So we're looking at those two regions there. So again, we want to think about the symmetry. They're the same area, so we don't need to calculate two separate integrals. We'll double the positive integral. Okay. Right, let me just make that whole graph a lot smaller. just move it out of the way a bit. Obviously I can also um, go a little off piste with my algebra here but you have less space so write small. Oh, sorry. Okay so the area we're going to need to calculate we're going to do two times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 um, and the functions about the x-axis so no need to worry about anything there and it's 5 times sine of 2x. Okay, so that's what we need to evaluate. 2 times antiderivative of sine of 2x is 5 times sine of 2x, sorry, it's 5 on 2 times cos of 2x. Oh, sorry, anti-differentiating sine gives us negative cos, so it's negative 5 on 2 cos of 2x between 0 and pi on 2. Okay, so then let's um, sub our values in. So again, don't forget your 2. So you're going to have 2 times. The other thing I might do at this point um, would be to actually take out that negative 5 on 2. Um, it'll just make my subtractions easier. Otherwise, I'm going to do negative 5 on 2 times cos of um, 2 times pi on 2 minus minus 5, 5 on 2 times. And 5 on 2 is a common factor, so it can come out. So um, you could take it out here and instead just have negative 5 times. It'll be cos of 2 times pi on 2, so that's pi minus cos of 0. So it's negative 5 times. Now, thinking again about your exact values, cos is the x-coordinate. At pi, the x-coordinate is negative 1. At 0, the x-coordinate is 1. Okay, so we have negative 5 times negative 2, and so we have positive 10 square units. Okay, so obviously each of those lumps has an area of 5. Um, together, the total area between negative pi and 2 and positive pi and 2 is 10. Okay, the work today is 11G, so practice using your rules of integ integrating um, circular functions, sine and cos functions, um, and with that will come some revision of exact values, sketching of circular function graphs, etc, etc.